Hey guys, before we get into today's episode, just wanted to really quickly address that there is a lot of social injustice going on in the world. There's a lot, a lot of systemic racism happening. Black Lives Matter. There's no debate about that. We don't want to get into a full episode about it because we don't feel like we are the voices that need to be heard right now. We don't want to get in the way of the message, but there are a lot of voices that you can go and listen to. We highly encourage you to do that. And I mean, Nikki's being nice about it, but we have a few things to say too. Uh, Jess? All I gotta say is fuck the police. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I gotta say, stop fucking shooting peaceful protesters, you assholes. Yeah, and if you're out there protesting, please be safe, know your rights, and just practice as much safety as possible. We support you fully, 100%. Just be safe. Take care of each other. We love you guys. We love you guys. So today's episode involves conversations of sexual harassment, assault, and rape. I know those are very, very sensitive topics, and this is, to be honest, probably our most serious episode we've ever done. So just a trigger warning for anybody who's sensitive to those topics, we're going to be discussing them. So you've been warned. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Big Mood. Um, We got four of us here today. We got Nikki, Tiff. Jess, and of course, there's me, Gina. I hope you guys had a good week. Um, today's episode is going to be about something that's been going on around Twitter, something that I am so proud of everyone speaking up for, male or female. And I think it's something that we can all, a lot, well, most of us can relate to. Mm-hmm. And that is um, sexual harassment, sexual assault, and, you know, all the experiences that we had. Because me, as a woman, I know that, you know, I've been through it. of women that I know have been through it. Also, men have gone through it too. So um, this is a very important topic for me because I feel like there's a lot of people out there who don't know how to put their voice out there. And from what I've seen on Twitter, um, people started calling out the people that assaulted them, started talking about it, and that gave others the courage to do it too. Do we know where that started? Like, Because I know we had Me Too movement several years ago, and then this wave kind of propped up again. I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Because the thing that I saw, Mm -hmm. for sure, the thing that I saw was um, like a continuous thread of people saying like, I was, and then like their age, and then the location of when they got sexually harassed. Oh. So for me, I saw it. I saw uh, Kehlani tweet about it Mm. and then like i followed her because it's like quote tweeting so it's kind of like a thread Mm. Um, i was i was confused because i saw that too but i thought it was for a second i thought i didn't understand what it was i thought it was like because of the whole uh black lives matter movement and the george floyd thing going on i thought it was like how old i was when i experienced racism and then Mm. upon seeing it more i realized oh it was completely something else so it was about sexual assault um which, ladies, I'm sure that you guys have been through it before yes. in your life. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, sadly. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know anybody who hasn't. Yeah. Who hasn't. That's it. I haven't experienced yeah. a lot of it, but I do have one um, memory from work that I have, but that's about it. What was that? Um, so uh, when I was in college, I got my very first kind of like real job at a at a condominium. I was like working front desk and I was trying to transition into accounting because that was what my degree was in and the general manager there at the time I guess he had a crush on me and uh, he saw that I wanted to do more and get promoted and things like that so he kind of took advantage of that situation and he started asking me to stay late with him for work to like help to help me learn some accounting stuff after hours and then eventually it turned into like after a week he like was telling me how his marriage wasn't doing well and all this stuff. And then it, and then basically at one point he cornered me in his office and tried to make out with me. <laughs> Yikes. So Ooh. that was, that, I mean, honestly, that was the, the biggest and really the only version of sexual assault I've ever had. I think I'm lucky because I think a lot of women get it like much younger family member, about, like way worse stories. For sure. Um, but how about when you worked at Hooters? Like there was never like any ass grabbing or... Anything I like never that? really felt, oh, no, not at Hooters. Well, if we're talking about ass grabbing, I think when I was, uh, like, early 20s, I went to a club and someone grabbed my butt at a club, but yeah. um, 
I mean, I don't know. I guess I that didn't affect me enough to really stand out. But yeah, yeah. like this the situation with my boss, like that really actually felt like that was um, using power. You know, it, it, yeah, yeah, it was using yeah. power. It hurt me. It hurt it my made you like feel small. It did. I, I remember thinking like, oh, is the only way that I'm going to you know, go climb the ladder in life is, is going to be because men find me desirable and I have to use that part of myself to uh, get the promotion that I want or whatever. So I remember coming home and I had a boyfriend at the time and I just started crying when I got home and like, he was just like, what's wrong? And I was like, oh, it's just my job sucks. And I didn't even want to tell him. I felt embarrassed to tell him, you yeah. know, it was yeah. super weird. I remember thinking like, fuck, like this is the real world, <laughs> you yeah. know, like. But see, I think you're not alone in that. Um, and I think that's why I like that it keeps getting brought up in, um, you know, on social platforms, because that is a reason why a lot of people don't speak up because we go, mm-hmm. well, it's not as bad as some other people that I've, you know, yeah. heard of. And I really do like that everyone's sharing all of their stories, no matter how little it seems, because a lot of the men didn't even realize that those little things were contributing. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. that's what's more important is that um, just like that be letting them understand and be aware that it's not just the person getting raped or the person getting um, physically like overtly assaulted. It's these little things that add up over and over, and over again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Causing you to in the long run believe that you're less than and like believe that you shouldn't speak up because you don't want to hurt anyone's career or mm-hmm. you don't want to hurt their life so or you don't want to cause a scene yeah and, right yeah. and be because then they'll downplay it too one. exactly mm-hmm. but like, you guys oh, want to know something energy? funny though what's funny so just. that boss wound up getting fired because he slept with like um a board member's wife oh my god wow. <laughs> so i mean he got he just was like crazy and he, and he yeah. had it coming anyway so i didn't have to do no shit. wonder he was having marital problems yeah right good lord Jeez. yeah um, the, I feel like the worst thing about this is that it happens very young. I was seeing yeah. multiple tweets of people saying I was like one digit age numbers, which is yeah. disgusting. And I personally tweeted, I was four years old when it happened to me, you know? And I remember everything from like four years old to like random men rolling their windows down and whistling at me and honking at me when I was walking home from school at, at nine years old, mm-hmm. you know, which yeah. now that I think about it, I probably should not have been walking home by myself, like around nine or 10 to, um, being at the arcade at 10 years old and an old man came over and like put his hand in my hair and sniffed me. Oh, oh. Yeah. It was disgusting. Uh, he did, he did the, never mind. Yeah. And, or like, um, I remember when, I was a pageant girl. I was second runner up in a pageant when I was 17. And, you know, we were all having dinner at a, like a, a council member, a council member's house or whatever. Like all the pageant girls were there. And I went to the bathroom upstairs and he like pinned me and like shoved his tongue in my mouth. Oh and my I was God. like 17. He was like 30 something, almost 40. Yeah. Or like people grabbing you at nightclubs. It could be something like that. Or I remember my old manager at uh, the restaurant that I worked at, like, um, try to like hold my hand while I was hosting at the front desk and I was just like bro what the fuck now that I think about it I could have just sued because it was a huge corporate company but you don't know when you're like when that's what yeah. you've been you're experiencing know. all of your life and then it happens mm-hmm. in a corporate setting you just think like oh well this must be how it is here too and mm-hmm. you just kind of shut up about that too exactly um you yeah. know and then and then for you gina like you know you said it happened in a pageant setting or like where you used to work or like maybe when you were a dancer i feel like people use that excuse too of um well like, like you must you, like it yeah you were going that route like mm-hmm. right like you were dressing that way you were inviting and touch attention you must yeah. have wanted it and yeah. i think that keeps a lot of people silent too. So there's yeah. a lot out there keeping people silent and yeah. not a lot out there being like, hey, you should speak up. In fact, there are a lot of people who have spoken up and there, I, f- I find more and more cases of people speaking up and saying that nobody believed them, mm-hmm. that they were told oh, they were really? a liar, especially if they're a child speaking up. Oh, so yeah. It, yeah. to get the courage to even speak up and then be told you're a liar and you need to shut up and you stop spreading lies. Yeah. I saw this tweet. Um, it kind of put it into a funnier perspective for me. It was like... Um, if like a room full of guys like someone says oh that girl's a hoe they'll all believe that Mm -hmm. statement but if you know in a group of you know guys if a woman says he raped me none of the guys are going to believe it or something like you kind of have to think like why would you believe that the woman is a hoe versus that the man did something wrong Mm -hmm. so much easier it's weird 
Yeah. Uh, because um, uh, because of the how it's processed. I mean, like the a lot of most times the rapist won't suffer any consequences because yeah. you have you have to prove it and you have to go through a lot to prove it. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. if you can't prove it, they can make your life a living hell for speaking out about yeah. it. So not only that, but I feel like it's just been so ingrained in like the history of humanity where it's it's been passed on like generationally where like a lot of the in a lot of homes, at least in, in like the neighborhoods that I grew up in and people all around me, every single woman in my life had gone through some sort of experience, like a sexual harassment experience, um, sexual trauma. And so when I was little, I actually thought that most women were just put on this planet just to go through these experiences. Like I I remember thinking when I was so young, like hating being a woman, because I'm like, fuck, this is not fair that we have to put up with this. And I thought that we had to put up with it. Like, I really thought that there wasn't, like, I I had never met any woman that had never been through anything, especially in their, like, in their childhood, though. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Like, a lot of this happened in our childhoods. And I just thought everyone was tainted and everyone was just meant to to be tainted. And we just had to put up with it and stay silent and, and live your lives as if nothing's wrong. But I always felt so tainted i did and i it it goes to show how women are treated in society and i've always told people for the longest time like i am terrified if i were to have a kid and be a daughter you know i'm so scared of having a daughter because it's so scary out there because you never know who it's going to be it could be it's not always just strangers most of the time a lot of times it's your own family members trusted people that you know you know um and that and that leads to another point i really want to really stress is that if a child ever tells you that they're uncomfortable around any adult at all please believe them and don't be like don't be silly go give them a hug you know like don't fucking do that if a child tells yeah. you they're uncomfortable and doesn't want to hang out with them absolutely take that seriously do not force them to hang out with them or exactly. interact with them at all like mm-hmm. we have a friend who has a daughter and she's really shy and she doesn't like hugging or kissing or nothing and i'm like mm-hmm. fuck yeah girl like stand your yeah. ground and like don't get forced like, if you don't want to do it, then good. Like, I'm just like, hell yeah, I applaud that. Like, mm-hmm. encourage that behavior. Because <laughs> it's like, I mean, but most parents, it's like, oh, come on. Like, you know, whatever. Because they, they see it from an innocent lens. But yeah, I mean, knowing that this is so common and like it happens often, like we do have to like protect our, our girls and not just girls, but boys too. Like, for example, mm-hmm. with Isaac, ever since he was like as young as I could, like, I had always asked him and always made that, like, number one priority. Like, please tell me if anyone has ever told you to touch them or someone has done anything to you or, like, if you were accidentally curious or something. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, please, 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 because that has been my number one biggest fucking fear is, like, mm-hmm. anything happening to my son. Because, like I said, this shit happened to me when I was way too young. It was way, way, I was, I was way too young. I literally have a laundry list of stories I can tell you guys. And there is just, it's, it's, it's too much. Mm-hmm. It just sucks. And is it too much to talk about those stories because of the, all of these things we were just t- saying about how they, you know, how it's just a lot in life to talk about, to talk, to actually speak up. And then when you do speak up, there's a lot of consequences that happen from it. Yeah. I mean, I, I can get into it a little bit cause I think it's, more healing for me I think like to Mm -hmm. just like stop like bottling it all up in because I did like open up about one instance on the podcast but I'll start from the youngest (laughs) I was um I think I was like three or four the first time that like as far back as I could remember when something like this happened to me and it was actually my babysitter's house and my babysitter's father was the one who had me like go into his pants and like feel him up and I didn't know what the fuck it was but he literally had me doing that and like I I remember like freezing and feeling like I wanted to scream and because I could see my babysitter in the kitchen and we were in the living room like I could literally see her and he had me doing this and I'm just like I couldn't speak like I couldn't say anything and I was I'm telling you, I was like three or four and I knew even then it was wrong especially the way he was just so secretive and like so like oh yeah and then he'd it's just it was disgusting and I I did eventually end up telling my mom and my mom 
I, I don't know the full extent of the details, but she did tell me that she pressed charges and he did get arrested. And Yay. they That's put him good. away. Um, wow. That was the Thank first God your mom one listened to you. That time. But Oh, no. Yeah, because yeah. like, then I was... I was 11 the next time that it was like the most traumatic one. Because in between all these ages, I mean, in, in my, I hate to say, I hate to bring attention to this because I love, I fucking love my culture so much. But it's so ingrained in the Mexican culture for older men to like look at little girls and like, it's it's so normal. Like pedophilia is just fucking normal. And so I remember being like really little and constantly getting like these like, sexual kind of looks from older men and me thinking I remember thinking when I was like six years old thinking like like am I sexy like I oh shit it was just fucking weird like I would constantly get these 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 looks and like like getting whistled at and like walking down the street because I also walked home alone like in, in the third and fourth grade and so it's just a lot of experiences but like the next horrible one was when I was um I was 11 and it was a family member and um, he came into my room after he had been drinking and he pretty much like, he would always do this disgusting fucking grooming thing. I think it was, I think you, I could label that, but like he would always like, like rub my back and tell me how soft my skin was and like how, um, how delicate I, I am. And like, it was just so, and I would be like really uncomfortable, but I didn't, like you freeze in those moments, like especially as a child, what the yeah. fuck are you supposed to do? So your yeah, mind also isn't developed enough to even comprehend no. what's going on or put it into words. And exactly, understand I just knew it was wrong. wrong. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just knew, like deep down, like this isn't right, and I don't feel good. But I, I didn't know how to get myself out of the situation. But anyway, so then that time when he came into my room really drunk, um, he was again doing the whole caressing my back thing, and then slowly he moved to the front and started fully going in on my nipples and areola to the point like that oh, experience. Oh, God, Tiff. I, I am, like, to this day, like, it literally mm. is fucking traumatic. Like, it affects, mm. you know, our sex sex life. Like, that's why I can't mm. really have him go in there. Because I'm like, I don't know, it's fucking traumatic. So, and so that's the and bullshit. Then, like, that's the bullshit is that, like, you don't get to speak out on that and have that guy face consequences, but you have to deal with all the consequences of his action, actions yeah. throughout He doesn't get life. traumatized by it. He doesn't yeah. sit there and, like, For him, you know, it was cry. a passing moment. Like he, right like, now. he had a fun time for a day or whatever, a couple hours, an hour or so, and then he, he goes and forgets about it. But for mm -hmm. you, it's a lasting event that made an impression forever and impacts everything in your adult life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like I don't like I've I've gone to therapy for this, and the therapist has asked me like, "Well, have you pressed charges? Have you like tried to s get justice?" And and like what you're saying, Nikki, is just really um, it's it's really hard to go out and do that because there's a lot of like collateral damage, like yeah. people that are also. So how do you prove involved. that now after all this time? Like people, how are people going to like rally behind you? It's like, everyone's just going to like brush it off, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not only will it cause collateral damage by just coming out with the story and, do yeah. and going the process of pressing charges, but also if you don't win, it was like almost like all for nothing because mm -hmm. that guy yeah. didn't, doesn't get, punished for it and then again you have to deal with the consequences not to mention you have to dig up your own trauma to even go through it to press the charges yeah yeah and so i mean that person in my life had remained in my life and so growing up like going through puberty i would wear the heaviest sweaters in the like in the middle of the summer because i just didn't want him to like see me getting developed and he would even poke fun at it. He'd be like, oh, what? Are you that cold? And I'm like, it was just constant. I couldn't um, get away from that. And and then like, yeah. You didn't yeah, feel like you could tell was, like your own mom or anything or Well, that's that the unfortunate, or? that's the unfortunate thing that I did tell her. And oh. she didn't believe, she believed him. And um, I don't. Like, my mom has, like, a whole other thing to deal with, so I don't fully fault her anymore. I think I've grown out of that, but for many years, I really held that against her. But as, you know, I, I understand why um, 
it happened the way it did. But um, moving on. <laughs> and now, um, you know, to, like, protect, now, now that you have Isaac and, you know, we exactly. have other little girls in our group and stuff, you know, to protect them. Like, after, you know, what I went through, I remember um, my I go, going out to eat with my friends and she has, like, a nine-year-old daughter or a ten-year-old daughter who in a small restaurant. Her daughter's like, oh, I want to go to the bathroom. She's like, go ahead. And I'm like... Is by herself with her? yeah and then yeah. her mom's like no she's old enough she can do it by herself but i know that this can happen at any time in like a and with life. anyone like, yeah with anyone a lot like, of people might think like oh a woman won't do that but yeah even no, some because like the the abuse like the victim becomes the abuser in a lot of cases and that's why i think like that's what i'm saying it's like generational like it just ends up happening because it happened to you so that you think this is okay and like you'll do it to someone else and I don't know. It's just it's so so twisted. But I, I like I, I feel like I feel like honestly I I do feel like some sort of guilt because I feel like I am kind of part of the problem as well by no. not bringing no. justice and not Absolutely like not. no that's a victim blaming mm-hmm. thing that mm-hmm. people do where it's like well did you press charges like it's all on the victim to have everything work out and it doesn't work out even with even with people who get a rape kit immediately after they've been been raped and they submit the evidence even even those people have trouble getting justice against rapists so it's like uh, you kind of feel like i guess this is just something we're supposed to deal with and sweep it under the rug or it's just part of it comes with the territory and that and that's what sucks and i think that when people share their stories like this, even in this kind of setting, even without naming names or pressing charges, it at least gives a little bit of um, a healing where we're coming together being like, you're not alone. Um, if this has happened to you, you're not alone in this. You don't don't feel like this is your your battle to fight alone. Like we're, we've all been in different situations like it. And um, I think, you know, because part of, Part of it is the when you stay silent and you don't hear anyone else talking about it, you you start to blame yourself too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean that's I, kind I of feel like the point where I'm at. I think I can I can say with confidence that if you've ever been a victim of like assault, or sexual like rape or anything like that, it is pretty much never your fault. Like ever, one hundred percent ever your fault. So you should never think that way. And I know a lot of people struggle with that. Like, well, maybe I didn't fight hard enough, or maybe. Yeah, I was drunk. Maybe I was dressed like this. That's not your fucking fault, dude. You could literally be butt-ass naked with ping-pong balls flying out of your coochie <laughs> in the middle of Times Square. And you're still not asking not for it. And an invitation for anybody. It's not an invitation, dude. Not how you act, not how you dress, nothing like that. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, I don't really have a really clever segue for this because it is a really heavy subject and I feel like we shouldn't be joking about it. So I just want to take the time to give a shout out to one of our sponsors, Honey, my sweet baby honeys. Um, listen, we all shop online a lot, especially now during quarantine. But did you know you can make online shopping even better? You can save money, money honey. with Honey. honey. So clever. I love the name. Um, Honey is a free online shopping tool that saves you money online. It automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart, which makes it so much easier to find a deal and it saves you so much money. So all you have to do is um, when you go to your favorite sites like Target, Best Buy, Sephora, uh, when you check out this little box drops down, all you have to do is click apply coupons and then Honey will start searching for all these coupons all across the vast world wide web and within a few seconds it'll scan every code and you and it'll apply it and you can watch the prices drop. So it's um, a browser I mean, extension that you install mm-hmm. and then it will do that automatically for mm-hmm. you. It's got yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so the honey personally saved me a lot of money because I've been shopping a bunch because there is nothing else to do and it makes me feel good. I was like, you know what, yeah, maybe <laughs> I spent six hundred dollars on like a pair of nail clippers, but then I saved five dollars too, so it's okay. <laughs> nail That's clippers? Safe- <laughs> <laughs> That's um, Gina out of gold. Bougie yeah. ass nail clippers. I'm saving something, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Honey. Um so Honey has found its users over 17 million members. It's found two billion dollars in savings for their users. That's I'm two one of them. 
To Burian. That's a lot of doll hairs. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, not using money is literally passing up free money. It's free to use and installs in just a few seconds. Plus, it's now part of the PayPal family, so you know it's legit. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash mood. Again, get it for free at joinhoney.com slash mood. Mood. Slash mood. And if, uh, if you're not bougie like Gina spending $600 on toenail clippers, <laughs> but you do want your own stylist or someone to help you pick out clothes and look more fashionable and bougie, highly recommend Stitch Fix. Okay, so Stitch Fix, here's how it works. You go to the site, you get to fill out a, a profile. You kind of like, they, they'll show you pictures of different clothing items. You say if you like it or if you don't like it. And from there, it gets to know your tastes. It goes, they assign you to a personal stylist. And then the stylist will pick out uh, outfits that they think that you'll enjoy. And then uh, they send them right to your door. So you don't even have to leave your house to go shopping. And you uh, try on what, what they sent you. You look in the mirror. You feel yourself. If you ain't feeling yourself, you're like, you know what? Maybe I'll send this one back. You can keep as much or as little, as little as you want. You pay a $20 styling fee for each fix, which is credited towards anything that you keep. Um, and then you also get a discount if you purchase all five items in the box. Um, you can schedule at any time. There's no subscription required. So plus shipping returns and exchanges are always easy and free. Stitch mm -hmm. Fix does the hard work for you, making great style effortless for everybody, including women, men, and kids. So get started today at stitchfix.com slash mood and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash mood for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash mood. I personally Ooh. love the jeans. The so jeans good. are key. Make sure you, you so say good. like to all the pictures of jeans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at the quiz, you I never knew that there were good jeans and yeah. stitch fix. It's I had no idea. Fit every woman that I know. And so soft. so soft. I love it. So soft. So mm -hmm. stitchfix.com slash mood. Mood. Um, or like I, I saw a lot of, I, like it's so barbaric to me. And I'm still seeing comments saying like, well, maybe you shouldn't put yourself in this situation. Maybe you shouldn't have drink or whatever. It's that's a lot like of saying, women saying that yeah. too. A lot of it's women. So on, yeah, a lot of women yeah. say that. Yeah. I think that's that's like, well, they're probably that, feeling like, guilty themselves that it has happened yeah. to them. So they probably, it's like the victim blaming mm -hmm. as well for themselves so they're projecting it i don't want to go completely against that but i think the the people who say that i want to believe that at least half or more than half of them feel like we have to live in the world that we live in so you have to be aware of certain dangers and not just mm -hmm. completely ignore it. like you wouldn't go into a gang infested neighborhood wearing the wrong color because you know like there's consequences for walking into danger so in certain mm -hmm. situations as women we have to live in the real world and know that if you're going to be completely fucking trashed at a frat party in a city you've never been in like it could be dangerous so consider mm -hmm. covering your cup consider doing all these things it's not to blame the victim but it's just to say like hey we have to be aware right of the danger okay. but it's never your yeah. fault yeah it's still never that. your yeah, sure. fault it's definitely like smart to, to to protect yourself and have certain precautions. I think when people hear that message, Jess, and I'm not saying like you yeah. didn't say it well or anything. It's yeah. just that like certain people like will twist it and say, well, we shouldn't even have to do that to begin with. Of course. And that, but that is there's a like, real world in, like, and a an utopian ideal world. world. <laughs> exactly. I, yeah. I totally agree with what you're saying, Jess, for sure. Yeah. And yeah, it would be beautiful if we didn't have to do this to begin with. Like, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm saying like, it really starts at home. And like, mm -hmm. you, it's really about educating your sons. It's, it's about breaking the cycle. And, and hopefully, like, eventually, we're working towards that world where we don't have to worry about this like, shit anymore. Teaching your kids not to take advantage of people, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I can understand that. I can I can understand it as in like for instance for me, um what we're saying is that saying like, oh well you shouldn't have been drunk is like saying, Well if you didn't want to get your house robbed, maybe you shouldn't buy things to rob or yeah. Yeah, yeah. But also at the same time what Jess is saying, like, well if you don't want to get robbed, don't go somewhere in like the third you world country is dressed in diamonds and gold. Right. So I get it. Right. Right. But it does start at home. You teach your kids like don't do these things to people like they're not asking for it. Like, you should just keep your fucking hands to yourself, you know? Yeah. And I, I have those conversations as often as I can with Isaac. Cause I'm like, absolutely. it's, it's horrible. Like, cause sometimes he'll have 
um, like a friend make like a certain like comment and jest and then I'm like oh hold on no no, that's that's not okay and you shouldn't be viewing women like this they're not right something you can just like joke at or honk at or laugh at and like Mm -hmm. we're fucking human too and like I I try to go in on him like as much as I can whenever I catch that and not even just when I catch it but like I try to like cover all the bases and just be like please Isaac don't grow up to be one of these men like I think the bigger the bigger um the bigger picture of all that is you can teach them all that too, but I think the main thing to teach them that covers it all is how to respect people. Mm-hmm. Period. Whether it be yeah. women or men or just anyone. Just and sticking people. up for each other. Um, mm-hmm. So like if you see yeah. it happening, if someone's ha- if someone's doing that to to jump in and, and put that person in check, for sure. That's right, exactly sure. what I tell them as well. Because mm-hmm. he'll have this one little friend who makes these comments quite often and I'm like, he, like you just you can't laugh with him either i know it sucks yeah. to be like the downer but you gotta educate your your friend if if you see that the moment you know like yeah do you ever feel yeah. like as a mom like you need to like kind of have a conversation with that kid's mom <laughs> or dad because i mean it's almost like how do we help the the kids you know yeah. it's like like kind of like it's a, the village raises the kids right so it's like hey I don't mean to be super weird, but your son's kind of making these jokes. Just so you know, oh, no. like maybe you I, can deal with it. I am that mom. Yeah. I yeah. have those conversations. <laughs> I literally have those conversations. I really yeah. do. Because I'm like, yeah. I, I feel so strongly about this that I'm like, I can't see the next generation. Like, especially in the immediate circle, like whatever I can do to help it. Like, I can't see the next generation doing the same shit that our generations and the generations before us did. Like, I can't just sit by and see that happen. And I hate those parents who are like, oh, no, boys will be boys. Like, shut the fuck up, you know? Like, that, that's... Right. I hate that. Because they actually extend that all the way to, like, the dudes, like, in their 20s. Like, you know, boys will be boys. You know, it's ridiculous. I feel like what they should be taught is speaking up doesn't make you, like, the downer or, like, the lame guy. It actually makes you more of a man, like, a better person in general you know yeah. to speak up and that's for that's where the change is going to happen like the real yeah. change has to happen when people are when they're young when they are are taught from the beginning that this is wrong and and they start you know putting each other in check so that everyone's on the same page but honestly, i'm not saying that's easy no mm-hmm. i don't think it's easy and honestly i do feel like young boys they kind of almost desire someone to be a leader in their friend group and like they all kind of they're like yeah <laughs> Yeah. Fuck those girls or whatever. But then, like, I, I've seen situations ar- amongst young kids, uh, young boys in particular, too, where it's like if someone comes up and, and acts more like a leader and, and they're actually already respected by their peers and they act a certain way, then all the other boys will follow. And they kind of, like, appreciate having something to rally behind that's, that's like, more respectful, even though a lot of kids are little shitheads. But I've, I've witnessed situations where, like, I know these younger generations, like, they... They feel good actually having something good to believe in. So yeah. I do. I do think lost. it's very possible. Yeah, uh, they're young and they're lost. So if they have a beacon, they'll follow it like moths. It does take someone that has confidence and and knows mm-hmm. that has a, a strong um, grounding on what's right. Um, because Steve was that for his peers, like growing up and putting his brothers in check. And um, he told me about certain instances when they'd go out to like him and his girlfriend went out to. Um, a club one night and this guy was uh, reaching under girls skirts and like um, grabbing their butts and yeah (laughs) and Steve went over and like yelled at that guy called security got him kicked out you know so there are guys like that um, and I think that if uh, that just continues to get spread that that's a good thing that that that's not looked down upon that's not frowned Mm -hmm. you know frowned upon than that and then if guys can see like you know if like let's say that guy back like it backlash on steve and then that guy's like oh you fucking asshole you pussy what you gay or something whatever yeah then it's like then that like i hope like other people around can see how that person is just so in the wrong th- where they make that the bad thing and not mm-hmm. steve standing up for what's right the bad thing because mm-hmm. a lot of especially in like our generation like being good having good grades like being like someone that was a good person it was lame it was yeah, not cool you square like, you don't want to follow that it's just like what the hell you, you were a nerd and all this shit for sure yeah but i'm like I that's hope already things changed, have changed for sure yeah that's it had to hit a tipping changed. point i know yeah. i feel like we're we're on a good path right now but yeah i wanted to talk more 
just like personal experience too, just because um, mm-hmm. I don't know what the solution is or what the best answer is. But um, I know that for me, um, like there's definitely been all those little sexual harassments, wolf whistling, cat calling, um, going to work and like having guys call you sexy and just like brushing it off because you don't want to cause a scene. There's a bunch of those that added up. But then two in particular that were beyond just, you know, sexual harassment um, that I didn't really speak up about ever publicly or press charges or anything was because one was a situation where I felt he was in power and I was very scared of him. And I uh, he was supposed to be my representation, but he would talk all the time about how he... Um, could he had lawyers and he it's not about what happens it's about what you can prove in court that happens and m- more than a handful of times he kissed me on the lips knowing i had a boyfriend and as i'm like actively trying to pull back and be like yeah. no but i'm as soon as i was like don't i don't like that he he'd flip and be like oh yeah so that's how it's going to be like that kind of attitude and i was so freaking scared i was in this contract with this guy and this was in my very very young 20s um and i was in a con i was in a five-year contract with him which who fucking has a five-year contract and i'm done for not i'm done for not having a, a lawyer read it but like i felt like it felt like a mountain was on top of me that like i didn't know anything about the legal system or how contracts work or how to get out of it. I had a lawyer try to get me out of it. He said it, it wouldn't work. Like basically I signed a very, um, a very aggressive. One-sided, oh, yeah. One, Is aggressive, there no like one-sided. morals clause or anything? Yeah. that would No, he, he had worded this. He knew what he was doing. What the way creep. he worded this was like, so barely getting away with it being legal, but I Dude, the worst it. thing about a creep or the worst thing about a creep is a very smart creep. <laughs> yeah, and I don't even think I don't even think it was that smart, but he was smart enough to have smart people like, yeah. that he hired. Yeah. yeah, and he would constantly remind me that um, he had that power and that he could take away everything that I have if I ever tried to fight him. He also, after every single audition that I didn't book, would tell me that it was because I was fat and untalented and that I needed to. Yeah, because I it's like that, nagging you or something. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Yikes. Um, also, wouldn't want to be his daughter or his ex-wife, uh, but um, he did that to God, not just marry. But yeah, and uh, it, he had, had a daughter is treating women this way. Jeez. And he had mostly right? strong women that he would sign. Like they were very like pretty independent, like good. Like I liked all the people that he had signed, but then he would break them down. And it was mm-hmm. it, almost like he got off on breaking them down or, or something. Mm-hmm. And so I never spoke out about that one because, um, well, I ended up counter suing for sexual harassment, but um, I've signed an NDA, so I can't ever like say his name or like put it out there. Um, but then also the other the other guy, um, I fell into that trap of being like, well, I love him, you know, um, and so like he would do horrendous things. And I would be like, I somehow asked for that or like. So he was well, your boyfriend? Mm hmm. Oh, weird. Yeah, and then that's harder because yeah. it's like, well, he's your boyfriend. But, um, yeah, like, one time I was sleeping. This was just one of the times. I was sleeping. It was, like, 3 in the morning. I was dead asleep. And you know what I mean? Like, I fall asleep at, like, freaking 10. Like, yeah. I was like I was dead asleep at 3 a.m. But he liked to go out. He came home. He lived with me. And he came home. And I just remember um, – he dumped like a cup of water on me, like dumped the whole thing on me while I'm sleeping in bed. And then I woke up to him stripping me naked and he started like finger banging me. And I hate fingers, by the way, I fucking hate fingers, but that's not even relevant because that's not okay. No matter if, if, even if I liked fingers, um, it's not okay. And I was just like, I was not ready for that. My body was not ready for that. I was not prepared. I was like so confused at what was going on because I was like dead asleep. I was completely traumatized by that Mm -hmm. he carried me to the other side of the room and left me there naked and then he went to sleep and i was Mm -hmm. just so fucking traumatized was he fucked up or something i don't know maybe probably uh he's maybe drunk maybe like odd he's never done something like that before and this we had only been dating for six months so like i just didn't 
I didn't know how to react because he had always come across as this like very sweet guy that like respected women. But then like little cracks started showing. And I was like, what about this? What about this? And then that happened. And uh, and I ended up spending the night in my car in Hollywood in a parking lot um, because I was I felt more safe there. That's than crazy. Dude, in my own That's apartment. very dangerous. Yeah, it was <laughs> at, like uh, several uh, people knocked on the window during. Oh god, uh, yeah, it was it was bad. Um, and it wasn't you like set him on fire. It wasn't a private parking lot either. It was a public parking lot in Hollywood. Like, so you should have just driven to Santa Barbara. <laughs> no, fucking gotten the fuck true. Out of there, dude. So many times during this relationship, I wanted to. I or I did. Um, I also would call my mom every day, like crying because of whatever but i found a journal where he like basically bragged about every girl he's like taking advantage of or, or he would trick or gaslight or you know he kind of got off on like being holding power over women and then the last t- thing i remember about him i won't get in all the incidences but um we were we'd been broken up for a day and i was still I still, like, had feelings for him. I mean, it was an abusive relationship, but I, like, had feelings for him still. Um, and so I, I brushed it off, but it was my birthday. I got hella fucking drunk, like, so wasted that, like, my friend was going to take a taxi with me home. And then he offered to do that instead. So he took me home in a taxi. And when uh, I just remember he I remember barely like getting into my apartment. And then I woke up to him having sex with my unconscious body. And I was like, well, um, I mean, like, at least maybe he still loves me then, (laughs) you know, and like looking back now, I am just like, horrified and shocked and just like I, I can't believe I let that happen or that behavior like I justified it in my head as me being like well maybe like I maybe I was drunk and I let him on right before that moment like I because I don't remember what happened I just remember waking up to that so um there's a lot that I'm like I would want to warn people about him but I also he's kind of become a stalker and I don't want him to like be in my life at all so yeah. uh yeah um dude i have I, a similar situation too like with my ex with the whole um like he would do this like i literally lost count of how many times he did this but there would be so many mornings i'd wake up and he was already like inside of me or he'd be fingering me and like the most disturbing thing too is that like as i'm like you know like you when you're kind of like waking up like you kind of move a little bit I'd be doing that to get him to stop and he'd freeze like, oh shit, she's waking up. And then like, I wouldn't move for like another like solid minute or two. And then he start again. Like he, he knew what he was doing and he knew that it was because I was asleep. And this actually got to the point where I said like, you are no longer allowed to sleep in my bed. You can't sleep over anymore. Like we can't, I don't even know how the fuck we even had a relationship, but right. This literally, yeah. like, it, it was it was so, like, traumatic to me that, again, it literally affects our, our like, my marriage, my, our sex life. Because, like, morning sex is awesome, you know? Like, great. You know, it's it sounds sexy. There's all these little great. things that are, like, that are normal, but that yeah. tie into this this way that the trauma you were, you were crossed the line for. Exactly, because so there were so many times and- where I, when I told my ex, like, I am asleep. I am not giving you consent. This is practically rape. Like, this is rape. Like, you cannot fucking do this to me. And then he'd be like, okay, I promise I won't do it. I promise, okay, whatever. He he was really good at manipulating me and convincing me that he was genuine. So I, I guess I always felt like, like like deep down inside like there was like a like some goodness or like he's telling the truth he doesn't really yeah like you all yeah i i kept trying to convince myself and so i let i give him another chance and then again that morning the same thing's happening again and i'd be full of rage where i'm like i don't know how to i don't know i wonder if it's hard for people like that to understand like why it's not okay because like how do you continue to do something that someone tells you not to do Mm. It's like they think we got over it because we, because so, well, at least for me, and it sounds like for you to like when they're, you want to believe that there's good in them. Um, he, this guy would buy me gifts after any time there was an incident, he would buy me gifts and I, and he would have this like long note about how much he loved me and like how he respects me and stuff. But then it would happen again because it's like, 
oh, okay, I'll forgive you then because I believe that you di- you made a mistake. Um, but then they, after enough time goes by, it's like they think, oh, we're all, it's it's fine now. It's like she'll, yeah. and then they do well, it again. It, it kind of goes both ways for me too. Okay, guys, sorry, I've got to interrupt for another sponsor. We love our sponsors; they keep the show going. This week we have a brand new one, and it is Roman. Roman is a product that will help men last longer in bed. And now I know what you're thinking. This is an awkward ad for this type of episode. (laughs) But you know what, guys? Roman (laughs) respects women. They respect healthy sexual um, activity, and so do we. And uh, we love Roman. Consented sexual activity. And uh, we love Roman. They uh, have a product called the Roman Swipes. They are a clinically proven way to last longer in bed. They're effective, easy to use, and fast acting, but they don't require a prescription. This is a little bit different from Viagra, as in it's not really like that. This is just going to help you, you know, last longer during sex. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can try these. They ship in a discreet, unmarked package, and each swipes packet is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. They will not transfer to your partner, so you can last longer without worrying, and it's super easy to use. Just take it out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry, and you're good to go. The folks at Rollman, which is a men's health company, are changing the game. Um, If you want to try these, get $10 off your first order of swipes and free two-day shipping at roman.com slash bigmood. That's GetRoman.com slash BigMood for $10 off and free two-day shipping. Again, GetRoman.com slash BigMood. That's right. And if you're looking for a fun way to pass the time while engaging your brain and enjoying some breathtaking visuals and a gripping story, your answer is my favorite Best fiends, guys. So it is a free download. So it's this really cool and exciting puzzle experience, unlike any other puzzle games out there, because Best Fiends, they actually update their game monthly with new levels and events, so it literally never gets old. Have you noticed that I've been getting uh, more intelligent over these past few months? Because I've been exercising my brain, you know? Sure, Tiff. You're definitely <laughs> much more intelligent. <laughs> I've been proactive in that way, okay? No. Okay. But you were really yeah, dumb before, so, but Best Fiends made you smart. Know, <laughs> Best Fiends really has exercised my brain. I am more articulate now. No, but, uh, but yeah, Silly. so I also love this game because of the fact that it does not require internet to play. So back when I was doing a lot of traveling, this was my go-to game on the airplane. And... They also have a, like tons of characters. You could collect all these cute little fiends and they you can use them strategically for each level because they have different powers and all these things. So engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must play. Download Best Fiends free on the app. Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best fiends. Download it now and thank me later. Woo! <laughs> because Tiff, you specifically said that you don't like that and he kept going. Mm-hmm. But for me, in a different way, is I actually like that. <laughs> but the thing, the difference is, <laughs> you I give consent. Him consent. Like, I remember yeah. dating a guy, and he's like, well, no, that, that feels weird, which is like, oh, okay, good. You thought about that, so that's good. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I'm into that. Like, totally 100% okay. Like, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, that's a conversation that you've had, but exactly. like, same with, like, me and Casey, like, I had told him, like, this is a, this is trauma for me. Like, mm-hmm. I literally lived with this guy, or, like, he's been, he had been doing this to me for a solid two years. Oh, my or, God. Like, year and a half. And you've mentioned multiple stop. times to stop it. Yeah. Like, like I would wake up screaming and like Jesus. it was it was horrible it was horrible and so I would tell him like this is the situation please do not do this to me and then Casey would do it too and I'm like dude come oh. on but like I guess he thought like I don't know what the fuck he's thinking and it got to it literally had to get to the point where Steve was like he just she just doesn't like that like what why does it have to be in the morning if that's not her yeah. thing like just let yeah. it be and since then Thank God. Like, finally, it's like that conversation has it's like, let's not touch that right now. Like, I'll let you know when I'm ready. Like, I'm, I'm still fucking like healing from years of this shit. And also years of like, you also not listening to me and not knowing how 
how important this this is to me. Like, yeah, why? Like, Some people why? just don't get it. Like, even when it's something this fucking serious, they just don't fucking get it. Like, there's so many times when I'm sure you guys have to tell your significant other over and over again, please stop doing this, you know? And I just, like, like, like non-related to sex, like, uh, yeah. Please stop, uh, stop cutting, cutting your chicken in my fucking, in my chicken fucking on my pan. On my yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that pan did not give consent for you to cut that chicken on there. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't. Yeah. But it's, you would think that when it comes to something as serious as someone screaming at you about it. Well, it, see, the thing is, like, well, okay, I got to clarify really sexually, quick. Yeah. I got to, I got to clarify the whole Casey thing, too. It's, um, he was, he, like, this is. I believe him, okay? But he says, like, you know, he just, he doesn't realize he's actually doing it. And if I'll, I'll like, move, I'll wait, like, I'll push him off or whatever. He does stop. Like, he doesn't continuously do it. Like, the okay. other guy was malicious. Yeah, I've known a lot of guys, like, doing. In, that, in that moment, kind of before you wake up, like, I've had countless guys, like, they'll be touching and they're, they're just, like, they're kind of waking up with the boner. And it's, like, kind of an innocent, like, they're not trying yeah, to do it on yeah, purpose absolutely. but it sounds like your ex was like he 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 was like doing it because that, you were asleep that is the clear distinction yeah, there. yeah that's yeah. the clear like that was bad this one is like oh shit like he's he's trying not to but he's like, yeah. subconscious like i understand that but he has stopped so i don't know yeah. what the fuck happened there but yeah for yeah. anyone feeling like there are mixed messages because I, I hear that from guys a lot like oh, i like yeah. mixed messages because like you know some girls they say no but they mean yes or whatever like they mm. like they de- deal with different personality types i think the clear thing that you have to listen for is consent like and and maybe we've had a conversation like oh you know i like it when you know you dominate me and i don't have to say anything then we've had that conversation beforehand yeah. and that's still consent but if if you are getting clear signs like body language too, body language of like, no, I don't like that or no, I'm not into it, then that is that should be your clue that that is not OK. It's not. Consent. But I think most normal guys kind of get that. It's yeah. just the it's yeah. the creeps and the weirdos like that Tiff was dating who yeah. like she said no a thousand times and he still did it. So telling no, them what consent means doesn't help it would get to the yeah. point where like if he like let's say we were hanging like with my ex we were hanging out really late and he's in my apartment and like it, he was drinking and it, he just didn't want to drive home whatever the fuck i'm like you're sleeping in the living room and i'd lock my door like yeah. that's how you shouldn't have crazy any, it got yeah. you should never date someone like that yeah. Oh God, girl. Well, yeah, and then that's why, like, looking back, it's like, wow, how did I let myself get into that situation? I had to do a mm-hmm. lot of therapy about like codependency, that that type of stuff, because if you, uh, like, a lot of behavioral patterns or his- history in people who are codependent, you had someone in your life who was narcissistic that you learned to almost people please, you know, mm-hmm. and and so that's how codependency gets created and um you can break it though like you can break codependency yeah. and so i think that was what was happening was i just f- the way that i thought i was receiving love was wrong yeah and, and i you, you want me and you want to believe they're a good person because like well we had all these good times so they are a good yeah person. exactly a little bit, and you start making excuses like oh yeah, maybe he doesn't know so that erases yeah. all the shitty shit that they do and it's well, not yeah. that's like, not fair for me, I think um, by my own therapist, I, I I really feel like a lot of the situations I was in was because, like I said, it started when I was so fucking young. I was three, four years old. And so since then, I had always felt like I wasn't I wasn't deserving of anything better. Like, I thought this is what I like. This is just the hand I was dealt. And this is just what I had to deal with. Like, too bad, Tiffany. Sorry. Like, yeah. and so that's why I was I was in too deep tiff because I just felt like I'm not good enough to ha- have better. And right. yeah, it was like it was a lot of um, like self hate, I think, because yeah. of the fact that I thought that this is just my destiny. Like, I'm just destined to just always suffer in one way or another. You hadn't built and, up like, the I, respect in yourself to like mm-hmm. know yeah. where to draw the line and know what was okay and okay for you. Yeah. The yeah. safe bottom line for me is I tell my sisters and a younger peers is like if there's anyone that's touching you in any way whatsoever that makes you uncomfortable, you don't have to follow through. You don't have to make excuses. Make a scene if you have to. I really hate. It's like people don't even notice that they're doing this, but I hate when like I'm talking to a 
a stranger or someone like a guy at a club, he always like trying to touch my arm. Like, oh yeah, so where are you from? Oh, did you want to like stop fucking touching me? Don't touch me, you know? Like, I I feel some guys are getting mixed messages too, because like you know those uh, what are those they call the guys that like help other guys get women makeup artists, makeup artists, artists. Yeah. yeah. They that's one of the things they tell the guys to do is like, oh, they like like a little signs of physical touch, like shows that you're interested and stuff. So it's like they uh, just don't depth, know though. when they don't know when to read yeah. the room. Those yeah. Tips. yeah, read the fucking room. And honestly, I'm gonna just put this out here right now. I don't care if I get hate for this. If you have to use a pickup artist. They're fucking lame, dude. Like it's like you're fucking lame. Because every no, video- actually, I'll um, add to that. If you have to use a pickup artist, you need to learn to love yourself. And once you do, you will gain the confidence where you can approach women. It's yeah. not about oh, what's the tips and tricks? Like oh, let right. me let me read. Let me like we're not a video game. Woman, exactly. Yeah. Like, if we're There's a no manual to or something. All women. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's I really saw, coming from a place of self hate. Like I've seen that's these, why you um, have no confidence. I've seen these ads of like, oh, do you want to learn how to pick up women, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, bro, what? Like, none of this would work. This Those is are like cringy. There's, shit. I mean, so honestly, cringy. there's a lot of, because I go through, when we started this podcast, I like was consuming a lot of content, like because I was single for the first time. And I was like, oh, we're like in a dating and relationships podcast. So I'm like, I was consuming a lot of content on the male and female side. There's actually a lot of like really respectful YouTube channels where guys who need dating advice can get good advice. Those are good. I don't think they yeah. call themselves pickup artists, though. No, are they? yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. like, it's like look for the, the guys that are trying to give you legitimate advice and not like yeah. uh, some sort of cheat code into getting into panties because that's yeah. like uh, that's a situation where you're probably going to cross a line. <laughs> yeah, true. Right? That's so, when they do things like negging. Where <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember getting negged, 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 yeah, neg- I got negged once. That's a different story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got negged once, and I was just like, bro, shut the fuck it's up. It's so you obvious sound now. so lame, right? Yeah. It's just, yeah. Um, but, uh, like I was saying earlier, it's just like, if you ever feel, like, any, just uncomfortable about someone, just touching you in any way, whether it be your fucking boyfriend, I don't care if it's your fucking boyfriend you've been with for, like, 10 years, you know? Like, if there's some sort of touching that's making you uncomfortable, you are allowed to speak up, because you are still your own person. This is your body. Like... I remember back when, what, 1950s or something, it was commonly said that, oh, it's not rape if you're married to him. You know what I mean? Mm. That's that's fucking stupid. No, it's still your own body. I don't care how long you've been with this person, whether male or female. If it's uncomfortable, you speak up and get the fuck out of there. Um, But I do want to bring up the opposite of this is that, um, well, I've seen quite a few articles and I've seen a few things on Twitter where people make up stories yeah. because they don't happen oh to like this person. Mm-hmm. And there was a football, a star football player in high school that went to prison for what, six years because a girl said that she, that she was raped by him. And six years in prison later, she finally confessed or confessed that she made it up. His life was ruined. His scholarship was taken away. He was never able to go to college. Dude, so, not just that, but like the entire like the, the actual the stigma, victims. The actual, like it's yeah, literally they ruin hurting. It for, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're ruining oh, it's so infuriating it for people who have gone through this, and you're fucking it up for everyone else. And it, I, I truly feel that if someone were to use this as a weapon, and it was proven then they should get a prison sentence too. Because Absolutely. you... Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, You messed up someone's life. That guy's life was... Hell you yeah. put someone in prison for for six years during his most, like, impressionable years. I feel like yeah. she should but get a minimum of six years or something. Absolutely. Especially yeah. if it was in court and, and you, she lied under oath. Like, mm-hmm. isn't that something that they can... Not only that, guys, but didn't you hear... Um, There was... Oh, my God, I'm so... I'm really sorry I'm blanking on his name, but this little boy from i think the 50s or 60s 14 year old he, boy yeah he was accused of like sexual harassment and this is also like you know a racial thing because he was a black boy are you and, talking like, about emmett till oh, no oh, i think it was Jesus. yes he was yeah no, wasn't he accused and it's just of like, like wolf was like it. it was, was quite, something was like quite, that but then he ended on. up getting there was murdered. a few like there was a few because there was one that was accused of murdering two white girls and there was one that was accused of talking to and or whistling to a white woman. Honestly, That's, there's thousands. Yeah. There's a lot. Young, this, this one's like, 
Yeah. Yeah. Both of which got killed. Yeah. One of them execution by the electric chair, and the other one was dumped in a river or mm. a body of water. Like lynched sort. or something. Oh yeah. My God, it's and just horrific. So, like, how do we not... put an end to that? Like, how do we, like, what do we, like, what yeah, that's can we what's, do? That's what's fucking it up, too, is, uh, yeah, is that these false reports are mm-hmm. making the justice system harder for actual victims to get any justice. I don't, yeah. I don't know if there's an answer for that because there's always going to be crazy people. Like, we can't, we can't, preclude the fact that there are literally mentally ill people that Mm -hmm. will do things like that it's just we have to have a certain standard for proof i guess or something Mm -hmm. i i I, it's hard but there's nothing we can do to stop that because you can't force them to be like okay well show me proof and then a lot of real cases would be thrown out yeah so it's it's there is no clear answer to this but you know just don't fucking do it don't be a piece of shit and ruin someone's life just because of some petty shit you know so it goes both ways, and um, I, I I feel like also we should really s- stress the fact that this, I, I really hate that um, when it happens to men, to little boys, like how many times have you heard a news article like, oh, little boy, you know, a teacher was arrested for having sexual relations with her student, and everyone's like, oh, nice. Oh, that's like that South Park sweet. episode? Yeah, <laughs> nice. You know, nice. like, oh, I wish that was my teacher. Like, Dude, that's fucking gross. Yeah. You know, it's like, really it's, weird. it's disgusting. I don't, yeah. So, you know. Um, or think- even we saw with uh, Terry Crews, who, I mean, he's a little bit of a problematic individual right now, right. I think. But we saw when Terry Crews came out, he got a lot of, like, he got dogged on, like, Oh, you're this big man. How did you let someone take advantage of you? And it's like, can you imagine how many other men right. some weird shit might have happened to? And they're never going to fucking admit it because of exactly. that. Exactly. Or like, they're just like, oh, you know, like, there are people who honestly believe that men can't get raped. And yeah. well, the majority of men that get raped are by other men, too. Like, it's mm-hmm. like, <laughs> there's a lot of predator people that don't give a shit what gender you are yeah but they can get raped by women too it's like well he got hard so clearly he wanted it it's just like mm-hmm. you guys really don't understand human anatomy do you yeah like, you guys are really fucking stupid mm-hmm. um like i i didn't i don't i haven't really touched base on my story because i do want i it's been a long time since it's happened and i yeah it, it was a lot of collateral damage that could have happened mm-hmm. that's why i stayed quiet about it for a long time i think i am getting to the point where I am ready to speak about it because I, because I feel like the more I speak about it, the more, the more it helps and it does good now instead of just damaging Have you ever me. told anyone? No. There's always So was this the it. first time, because you tweeted, um, I was four, like, mm-hmm. as a part of the movement. So um, is that the first time anyone in your family has heard of that? Or do they know whispers of something, but they don't know details or? In the family, everyone knows. Okay. In the family, everyone knows. Um, publicly, it's always been hinted at, but I never really went to detail. The family, in the family, everyone knows because, um, it took me a long time to realize what happened to me. Um, and then. Of course, you don't have any fucking clue what the hell that mm-hmm. is as a child. Yeah. And then, um, like, I think I, I have mentioned before that I cut off, like, a whole half of my family. A mm-hmm. uh, whole side of my family is because of that. And, Upon, like, being on Facebook, I noticed that the people that I did get along with in that family um, had children now, and a lot of them were little girls. And I was like, fuck, well, shit, like, if I know something, that I should say something, because if anything would happen to those little girls, I would feel responsible. I could have prevented it, you know? So I did speak up. I messaged every single person, you know, I a long message, like, hey, you haven't heard from me in, like, about 12 years, but here's why I left the family and all that. Um... So, you know, thankfully, all but one believed me, um, which is really weird because the one that didn't believe me was my attacker's daughter, mm. which uh, kind of leads I mean, me mm. to think that I think something may have happened with her, too. Also, it could just be like as a daughter, you with your dad, that you have too. like this, this like he's my king complex, my my daddy, you know, like I'm not kind gonna of. believe that kind, kind of. of well, but not I only that, her. but I spoke there have her. been situations like I think um the mom, uh, mamas and papas, you know the that band, that band, the, yeah. So I think it was that band, but um I had heard that the girl from like a girl from that band, she had been 
was sexually molested and like raped like her entire life by her dad Mm -hmm. and she thought that that is how a dad shows love to a daughter Mm -hmm. so then once like another i think maybe i'm messing this up maybe i'm mixing this story with another story but by the time when someone came to uh like a different family member that got abused by this by her dad she ended up saying like what are you talking about like this is how love is shown like what do you mean like this is this isn't wrong this is that's exactly what happens me love that's exactly what happened when i spoke out because i told all of his kids i told his wife and his wife was like well that that didn't happen, and if it did, that's just how Vietnamese people show love. And I'm like, excuse the fuck oh, out of you. Same story. Mm. Oh, yeah. So you know, so I, I spoke up about it, and you know, all his children knew. He had all sons and one daughter. All the sons were livid. Like one of them wants to go down there and kill him. So I have their support. The daughter was a bitch. Fuck her. Um, <laughs> hope she dies. Um, we don't know her story though. Yeah, well, no, no, she was she was a fucking raging cunt. I don't care. I hope she dies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't use that word often either. Um, so, you know, I, I felt like I was, I had to speak up about it because I didn't want it to happen to any of the kids. And when I spoke up about it, you know, a bunch of other family members said, you know what, we never liked him. Um, we kind of had an idea this is why he left. But the Asian culture is so loyal to the head of the family, the man of the family, like, oh, yeah, like, they gave you everything, so you should never speak out, you know? It's like a, this, this disgusting Asian respect thing and the whole, like, we can't lose face. Nobody can know this, you know? Like, they, we don't want to be embarrassed kind of thing. They it's Similar in the Mexican culture. That's yeah. how it continues. Yeah, so that's why, like, his wife protected him. Like, no, this this would never happen, isn't that? And so um, I ended up, I did confront them, you know? I finally, it took me years. I only did it, like, last year. And I felt like that was a huge healing process for me. Um, but fortunately, he has died. I hope it was painful. But, you know, that... Oh, my God, Gina. <laughs> I hope he suffered every second of it. Um, so that brought a little bit of peace to me, too. But, you know, it, it, it was something that affected me for a long time. It affected my relationships. It affected my, my, my like, how I grew up, my personality, how I developed. Um and it's just something that really molds you as a person it really does it really Mm -hmm. does and it and like nikki said it's fucked up because nothing happens to them we're the ones who take the brunt of everything Mm -hmm. and from childhood to adulthood you know it's there all the time and you never fully get rid of it but you do learn to kind of i guess coexist with it the best you possibly can yeah grow from it as Mm -hmm. much as you can i mean be like well I guess my I can take it and help others with it, which exactly. I hope that we do. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's always just kind of there. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you take the dirt and you plant flowers with it, and that's what I want to do. You know, so I, I think I'm I'm almost ready to come out and talk about it. It's gonna be it's gonna be quite a process. But I like that saying: like take the dirt and plant flowers Thanks. with it. I just made it up in my head. Oh, I like that. Oh, no, I like Good it, job, Gina. <laughs> Thanks, creative soul. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Um, but you know, I, I really, this is a, this is a subject that I am so incredibly passionate about because it's something that I can relate to. And I know that all my, my friends can relate to. Um, so if you're watching this right now and you're looking for a sign or looking for that extra kick to really take control of it, finally, to either Mm -hmm. speak out or you don't even have to speak out to get help for it or something. Yeah. This is the time to do it. The sooner, the better. You didn't do anything wrong. This was not your fault. Mm-hmm. It was never your fault. You are the victim here, and this you if you if you need someone to you know just kick your butt and like you know just go. You need to do this now. Then please do. Yeah, find or, the strength in and yeah. your trauma because I think for me personally, like I felt my trauma uh, defined me and held me down. Like Mm -hmm. I, I really just let myself get consumed with being a victim. Mm -hmm. Like I was just like, well, this is just my life. This is what I have to go through. And this is it. Like, but then like, I don't know, like going to therapy, even in this moment, like speaking out about it and actually sharing my experience. Like it's like, you have to grab that trauma and, and find strength in it and come out the other end and be, lighter 
Like, it's mm-hmm. just like, you know, like, no matter what it is that you do, it, it's either therapy or confronting your abuser or or whatever it is. Like, like talking about them. it to someone. Yeah, just yeah. anything. It really, um, it ends up, you feel lighter. Yeah. You really do. It really does help. And this is an ongoing conversation, which is why I am happy that, like, it does keep getting brought up on Twitter. And it's not just, like, I, I did feel, like, kind of when the Me Too movement happened, like, oh, I missed my chance to speak out on it. Like, because it's gone and I don't I don't feel alone again, you know? Yeah. But it, as long as it's an ongoing conversation and people continue to share stories and we feel like, oh, my gosh, we can get together. We could, you know, band together on this mm-hmm. and... Um, stop victim, stop the victim blaming and stop uh, blaming ourselves and stop feeling guilty for what was done to us. Um, I think that's a step for um, sure. And, you know, I, I'll be, okay, so this might be contrary to what I literally just said to you, but also at the same time, if you need to take your time, please do it. Yes, exactly. You know, there's yeah. never too late or too early. Like there's a lot of arguments like, well, why did it take you so long to come out and fucking mm-hmm. say it? You know, that, oh, that's not that a valid one. argument. That's not this, a fucking valid argument. I hate that argument. one the most. The, mm-hmm. the story I share, this is the first time I've ever shared it ever publicly, and that happened in 2012. Mm-hmm. So it's been eight years, and I've never said a peep about it except to Steve and, like, maybe one or two people in my circle. Mm-hmm. But um, I've never publicly yeah. said it, and that's – it just – it's not on you to like it's again that's another form of victim blaming is like it's not on you mm-hmm. to it's, everything is in your control you go by your pace mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. you this is not who you are this doesn't define your whole entire life your personality your value your worth or anything um but it is fully in your control now you can speak about it whenever you want to take control and you don't have to be a victim forever yeah we love you guys Love this you. was a this was a heavy episode, but it's necessary, and it's Plant definitely flowers. something. Plant flowers. Plant yeah. flowers. Do dirt. Plant your flowers. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. hope you have a great week. Mm-hmm. That's Be it. Good. It's been a mood. It's <laughs> been a mood. It's been a, a big, big one. mood. Yes. It's been a big mood. Take care, everybody. Oh, yeah. Bye. Bye. Love you. All right. Bye. See you next week. <laughs>